and the Pirates. Signing a load of meats a thousand miles at old shops rates. Mm-hmm. Well, to each his own. With some guys it's liver worse, with others women. They come to think of it with me, it's both. <laughs> Take over, will you? How are we doing? I'm going to hit Quan Ju in about 30 minutes. That's all. I can't stand it anymore, that's all. What's the matter? Take over, chum. Where are you going? That away. What for? To eat, Terry, my lad. I want to sink my choppers into some of that luscious grub yonder. Now you stay away from that stuff. Just a little nibble here and there to sustain a dying man. Now tell Mr. Quo to deduct my lunch from the balance of his bill. Sure you won't join me, chum? Nope. What self-control. Three things a man should never say no to. Money, maidens, and... You stop messing with that stuff. Mr. Quo won't want it with your fingerprints all over it. Of all the dirty tricks. Oh, calm down, Mama. Take it easy. No sense percolating over split dates. Well, the least he could have done was phone me. I'd have made other arrangements. After all, Terry Lee isn't the only man in town. Oh, but some men, huh? Besides, there was a big bonus in the flight for you. Oh, sure. 500 slices of lettuce. That's a lot of moolah, too. Besides, old Chopstick was supposed to have phoned you to square things for my flyboy. But I forgot in the rush of super important business. You mean that? Oh, sure thing. Uh, clever jokers, the Chinese. But they missed a good bit when they never cooked up a hamburger with onions. How about one for you, Burma? Guaranteed to soothe those stood-up nerves. No, thanks. Uh, oh, Captain Tang. Just in time for chow. Here on urgent business. This is Lieutenant Colonel Carter, United States Army Security Division. Would like to ask you a few questions. Okay, Colonel. Shoot. Always glad to help out Uncle Sam. Have you ever seen this man? Oh, sure. That's Mr. Sullivan. When did you see Sullivan last? Oh, this afternoon. 3.05, to be exact. He slapped a bundle of loot in my hand. Advance payment for a shipment of meats consigned to Mr. Kuo in Indochina. He's a good Joe, that Mr. Sullivan. Is he? Oh, sure. If there's one thing old Chops can spot, it's character. Well, old Chops, Mr. Sullivan is now under a military arrest. And that cargo meat your pilots are flying isn't meat at all. It's compound C3, stolen from army installations, and bound not for a Mr. Cole, but that renegade, John Basil. Basil? Colonel, is this as serious as it sounds? Do you know what compound C3 is? No. It's a substance like putty. It can be shaped into any form and thus easily disguised. Mr. Sullivan had to disguise his meat so it could be transported under some type of refrigeration because that's the safest way to transport it. One moment, Colonel. You're sailing way over my head. The safest? That's right. Hit that meat, bounce it, drop it, jar it in any way, and it might explode. You'll be lucky if you ever see your plane or pilots again. Fun of having feet. Red goose shoe. The way they feel, the eye appeal from toe to heel, you know they're real. Red goose shoe. They'll take it. They're tough. Girls aren't that rough. Have the fun of having feet. Red goose shoe. Red goose shoes. You know what's always good news? Red goose shoes. With red goose shoes, you always find not one, but many, many wonderful shoes to choose from. You boys are sure to like this smart red goose shoe, the Bryant, 
a moccasin-type latch oxford of smooth brown leather. Notice the smart black binding all around the edges. This makes the Bryant a sharp military-looking shoe. And best of all, this latch fastener snaps into place in one easy movement, just the thing for young men on the go. Boys, see the Bryant at your Red Goose store. It comes in black and in brown and in butternut grained leather, too. That's the Bryant. With your next pair of Red Goose shoes, there's something else to look forward to. A shiny ID bracelet engraved with your own name right at your Red Goose store. It's yours absolutely free. Now watch closely for the Red Goose dealer in your neighborhood. Step smartly, boys and girls. Make tracks to your Red Goose store and see the shoes that are always good news to your feet, to your eyes, to your parents who pay for them. Those wonderful Red Goose shoes. You'll love them. Have the fun of having feet. Red Goose shoes. Red Goose shoes. Hey, Chaz, what'd you do, get lost? Now looking at a contented man. <laughs> All right, contented man. We just passed over Quan Ju. Get on that radio. Hey. The Canton Dragons are on the Hong Kong Tigers four yard line. Air Cathay to Flightly. Air Cathay to Flightly. Come in, Flightly. I guess I ate too much. Air Cathay to Flightly. Come in, Terry. Be careful, Terry. Don't light no matches. Don't hit no sky rocks. Don't jiggle plane. Please, Terry, come in. It's calling Air Cathay Flight Sullivan. Here it is. Position X calling Air Cathay Flight Sullivan. Come in. Air Cathay Flight Sullivan. Where'd he put this flying delicatessen down? Pay attention, Air Cathay Flight Sullivan. We'll direct you to a landing field. No soap. What can we do, Colonel? Well, there's a good chance the C-3 is packed safely. After all, Sullivan didn't ship it to have it explode in midair. The thing we'd like to do is get our hands on Basliner's gang. Mr. Sullivan's instructions were to fly the plane to the Quanju area, then bear due north. Radio would then pick up plane and direct same to Mr. Ko's private airfields in the hills. Captain, you contact the Indo-Chinese authorities and relay the information. Certainly, Colonel. I will keep in touch with you by mobile radio. You can help me if you like. Oh, sure, Colonel. Anything you say. After all, I've got a big investment in that plane. Plane? Oh, and pilots. You and I can fly north of Quan Ju and see if we can spot it. Fly? You mean you want me to fly? Of course. Oh, Colonel, I, I love that C-47. I, I like having the boys fly it for me. but. To go up there and look for them. Oh, no, Colonel. I, I'm a sick man. I, I've got claudrophobia. Listen, Chops, you've got to go. He's sky shy, Colonel, but you've got to make him go. Claudrophobia, indeed. I'm sorry, miss. I can't force him to save his own men and equipment. I've got it, Colonel. Come and dear me. Make it official on behalf of the USA. Please, Colonel. I'll go along, too. On behalf of the United States government, you hereby uh, volunteer to assist in the recovery of the missing compound C3. Huh, that's better. Come on, what are we waiting for? Let's go. meat? Yeah, in there. My men will unload. Your presence is wanted in temple. I will direct. This way.
do you make of it? I don't know, but something tough. That guy that escorted us here was acting kind of suspiciously. Welcome, gents. Right in time for a spot of dinner. Sorry, we won't have time to stay. Uh, we want to see Mr. Cole now we're able to shove off. Ah, oh, come off it now. You know better than that. There ain't no Mr. Quo here. What do you mean? You know what I mean, all right. There ain't no Mr. Quo and never has been. I'm the boss here. You know who I am. We haven't the slightest idea. Now, uh, give us the balance due on the cargo and we'll take off. <laughs> That's a bit of comedy, all right. Now, listen here. The moment I set foot in this room, I seen you recognize me. John Basil's face and uh, gang is too familiar. So for the time being, you remain in here as my guests. This guy's got a sense of humor. It can kill you. <laughs> uh, we got company, Marlotta. Uh, Ustle up some food, eh? Maybe she needs some help in the kitchen. Well, you ain't eating, Captain Charles. Me pet's cooking ain't good enough for you, eh? Oh, no, 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 it's, it's not that. It's just that I don't feel so good. You all right, Chaz? Hey, he'll be all right. The change in climate's done him in. My life will take care of him. May I do something for you, sir? Yeah, you sure can. Are you done all right, Captain Lee? For a man who wasn't too anxious to stay to dinner. I'm still anxious to leave, so uh, excuse my partner and I. No, no, Captain, I won't excuse you. As I understand it, Mr. Basil, guests are usually free to come and go as they please. Some guests. You and your pal ain't in that class. Oh, oh, splitting headache, splitting. Oh. You can come with us. I want to show the captain something of interest. Come on, Captain, your plane will be all right. If he don't get out of the line. You are feeling better, Captain? No, oh, much better. What's the matter? Oh, shooting pain in my side. Oh, my poor Captain. Quite a collection you've got down here. Including the meat from Mr. Quo. Mr. Quo? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Quo. John Basil's private arsenal. By the time I get through using this, everything I want will be mine. Captain. Mm. You know, you are a handsome man. Oh, I get by? You must have many, many lady friends. Hmm, Captain? A few here, a few there. I never bother to keep track. Captain, could you find room in your heart for me? Well, I uh, got a big heart. That leads underground. There, I got me ten times as many guns. And a thousand times as many rounds of ammunition. When me and me men cut loose, we're gonna create the biggest ruckus ever heard around these parts. So you got yourself a choice. Team up with me and be my Air Force, or... <laughs> what do you say, huh? Eh? What about this meat we just flew in? Meat? <laughs> meat, he says. You know what that is? U.S. Army Compound C-3, an explosive. Looks like meat, all right, don't it? Can be shaped in any form. Sullivan shaped it like meat, so it... Holy can... smoke! Hot shot eats some. Let him go, we ain't going no place. Jazz! What's the matter? Can't a guy have a little privacy once in a while? Look, miss, you better get out of here. What's with you, Gary? 
For once, I latch onto a luscious babe, and you have to scare her off. Is this fair play? Is this just... Now, simmer down, Chaz, and I mean it literally. Relax. Something fall on your head? Chaz, how do you feel? Until you came along, good. Now, bad. I'm in your stomach. No kidding. Overloaded? Stressed? Like it's straining at the leash. What? Sit down, chum. <laughs> Gently. Gently. Those hot dogs you ate weren't hot dogs at all, Chaz. What? What do you mean? That stomach of yours is loaded down with a brand new kind of dynamite. Dynamite? Is that so? Dynamite? He said that fool, his friend, ate some of the explosive. That's right. You better get them two down below before they blow the place up. Come on, let's get out of here. I'll tell you all about it on the way. <laughs> Don't shake me. I might go off. All right, come on then. <laughs> Wait a minute. I gotta be careful. I'm loaded. What are you gonna do? Ice. Oh, keep cool, dynamite. All right, let's go. Where to? The plane in the nearest city and stomach pump. Wait a moment. Quiet, friend. Quiet, don't go to pieces. Easy does it, chum. I'm a human bum. Can see three compound himself. Take these two idiots down below. Get them out of here. They've got to be around here somewhere. I'm afraid we'll never spot them from here. The terrain's too rough. Wait till I build that basil for storage. I'll soak him plenty. Give a little thought to a couple of pretty nice guys mixed up in this, will you, Chopstick? You think my flyboys can wiggle out of this? I bet you everything I owe, they come out of this okay. Well, just don't stand there. Do something. Any bright ideas? I'm not even thinking. If I think, Chum, it'll generate heat. And if I generate too much heat, boom! Mm, me and my big, fat appetite. How do you feel now? Ugh. What am I going to do? I can't go through life like this. If we don't figure some way out of here, you won't have much life left to go through. Say something cheerful, will you? Things are tough enough as it is. Well, if we could get to that radio unit upstairs, we can make things kind of uh, tough for Basil. Uh, yeah, but the radio unit's out there, and we're in here. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Don't go there. The only way we'll ever get out is to blast. Well? Hey, we're not as bad off as we think. Huh? Why not? Watch. All right, come on, open up. Open the door. Open up. Don't touch me, Sonny, or I'll explode. Remember, I'll go to pieces and take you with me. You see that, Terrence, my boy? The human bomb calls the shots. I tell you, kid, I'm dynamite. You heard him, ugly. Step aside, or uh, I light his fuse. Okay, chum, give me the match. No, no, no. That's better. Now, let's go see Basil. And everything you see belongs to you. Nice, eh? You two gents just can't wait to get it, eh? Use that gun in here and we all go together. Mind you, Terry, we could have chosen better company. What are you two maniacs talking about? It so happens I'm loaded with compound C3, uh, which quickly responds to such things as bullets, etc., etc. That's right. Such being the case, uh, your gun, please. Charles, in the event of anything unforeseen, it might be a good idea to get the young lady out of the room, huh? Come on, baby. Uh, look, baby, if there's anything left of it when this is all over, you can have it. Oh, yeah. Better go before I get warm. This is Captain Tang calling. Can you hear the Air Cafe flight emergency? Air Cafe flight emergency. We hear you, Captain Tang. Go ahead. Have contacted Indo-Chinese authorities. I am with police force, which has radio unit for communication with you. Now moving north of Quanju in search of Basel's camp and missing pilots. We'll keep channel open for messages from you. Over. All right, Captain. If we spot anything, we'll let you know. Off. Well, that's it. Now all we have to do is find the plane. What are you going to do? Like I told my friend, uh, the bomb here some time ago, 
Uh, it might be nice if we got a chance to use your radio. That's what my non-explosive comrade said. Shall we go? Better bolt the door, Chaz. We may be here a long time. It's no use flying around in the dark, kids. Let's go home and try again in the morning. No. But we may run out of gasoline. I'm afraid he's right, Brahma. There's no use in jeopardizing our own lives. Tomorrow may be too late. Circle the area once more, Colonel. Then let's... Urgent message. Urgent message. This is Captain Terry Lee. Terry! Do you hear me? Does anyone hear me? Over. Terry, Terry, darling, I hear you. Over. Listen, relay this to the police. Position of John Basil's kin. 57 kilos north of Quan Ju. Azimuth 430. Landing strip adequate if you can locate it between two hills. Oh, what are we going to do, Colonel? Oh, look for a landing strip between two hills and land. You bet we've got that, Terry. Get Captain Tang now, Burma. He must be pretty close to there by now. A landing strip between two hills in middle of the night? Oh. All of compound C3, Mr. Sullivan promised to send is here. What that fat idiot ate was not C3 at all. What he ate was real meat. The meat Mr. Sullivan put on top of compartment to get shipment through customs. That fool is no human bomb. Quick, we go. of having feet. Red Goose Shoe! The way they feel, the eye appeal from toe to heel, you know they're real. Red Goose Shoe! They make me want to dance. Dance? Not a chance. Half the fun of having feet. Red Goose Shoe! Red Goose Shoes! Just look at those Red Goose Shoes, boys and girls. It's wonderful to know that they're just as comfortable as they are good looking. Like the Sway. That's the name of this snappy girl's black and white saddle Oxford. With the Sway's all crepe sole and heel, it's like walking on air, the very height of comfort. It's styled with all the flair Red Goose shoes are famous for. You see, it's a saddle Oxford with a difference, the buckle at the back, the kind of touch you'd expect to find only on shoes for older girls. Comes in plaid and white, too. You'll take to the Sway, girls, the moment you see it. You know where to see it, at your Red Goose store, soon. And with your next pair of Red Goose shoes, you'll receive something else to be proud of, a shiny identification bracelet that you'll love to show to your friends, one with your own name engraved on it right before your eyes. This lovely present is waiting for you with your next pair of Red Goose shoes. Now watch closely for the Red Goose dealer in your neighborhood. When you're looking for shoes, boys and girls, look for the Red Goose, and remember to look in the right shoe for the Red Goose label. Then you know you're getting real Red Goose shoes. Have the fun of having feet. Red Goose shoes! Red Goose shoes! Who's that? Please to let me in. Men have asked me to speak for them. They wish to have peace. What do you say, Terry? Well, under the peculiar circumstances, I don't see what we had to lose. <clears throat> Dirty double-crossing rats deserting me at the first chance. Where's your gun? Listen, Ugly, I'm a blooming arsenal in my own right. I don't need a gun. Not a gun. Are you crazy or something? One deep breath and boom! Shut up. See? No explosion. You ate me, not compound C3. Do you know what I'm gonna do to you, chum? I'm gonna separate you. Let's go. Yes. Well, this makes quite a tableau, gentlemen. Yeah, cute, isn't it? Our reception committee is waiting for you upstairs, Captain Lee. Burma? All right, Mr. Basil and company, let's go.
the nick of time, Chops, I see. Just like the Marines. Oh, I help yourself, Chops. Free food. Quilla, Pilot, Quilla. He won't bother you anymore, miss. And to be rescued by one so handsome. Thank you, ma'am. I'm looking for one handsome, elusive airman. Have you seen him? Downstairs in the ammunition room. Thanks. Terry! Irma! Baby! Well, now look, baby, you're not gonna fight this, are you? First, I want to ask you something. That man, they call him Colonel. What does that mean? Well, that means he's an important man in the Army, Sugar. He's very handsome. Oh, uh, yeah, but uh, too old, not in our class. He makes much money. Yeah, fair amount. Now about us. Well. Well, well. Mm. This little pig stayed home. Quiet, coming, Bob. Quiet. Chops is composing a literary masterpiece. Joy can. What did he say, Terry? Can you understand his dialect? He said, see you again. Ho Pung Yao. When illustrious friends... Ding Hop. Gather for... Ding Ku Jai. Further exciting adventures of... Further exciting adventures of... of Terry and, and the, the Pirates! pirates. Be with us again the next time we take off with Terry and the Pirates in another exciting high-altitude adventure.